Welcome to the Run Jiu Jitsu Podcast. This is episode 126. I did that intro really fast just for the people who listen to podcasts on two times speed. I'm Matt. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You know, and good night. <laughs> yes. A lot of people listen to their podcasts on one and a half, two times speed. Imagine that would have just started. Yeah. So, <laughs> I always listen to gotcha. mine on two times speed. Yeah. It's funny when I listen to. But it's. Sorry, go on. When I listen to this podcast back, um, it's funny hearing my own voice in yeah, two, two times, times speed. Yeah. yeah. If I guess it depends what I'm listening to. Like I actually, sorry, let's episode 126 guys. <laughs> we're talking about the reality of jujitsu and the struggles of jujitsu. Mm. Now that you know what this episode's back about, back onto talking about unrelated shit. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I don't really listen to many podcasts, but I've listened recently been listening to, um, I mean, very well-known podcaster, obviously is Lex Friedman, but, uh, Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> I haven't heard of that one. I'll check oh, it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, I think it's episode like three ten or something. So a while yeah. back for his episodes, but it's got that guy, um, Alex Bustamanchi or whatever he is, that ex CIA guy who's, okay, yep. you know, been doing the rounds a while back. I believe he's been on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast and everything. Do you know the guy I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. And um, anyway, so I've been listening to that episode and I started it on one and a half speed, but I actually didn't like it. Like, you know, I felt if it wasn't at their natural speed, I didn't feel like I was part of the conversation. Like it wasn't immersive enough for me. Really? Whereas sometimes I'll listen to a podcast where I'm just trying to, you know, receive that information dump, mm. so to speak, and I'll play it fast because mm. it's almost like I'm just trying to get from A to Z. You know, whereas if I want to be immersed in the dialogue, I want it to be at a, at a their natural talking speed. That's so interesting. I have the opposite problem. If it's too slow, I get distracted and I start doing like thinking about do, other things. Do, 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 yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do, 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 do. It Wait, needs to be super saying? fast. It needs to be fast and like just constantly like go, 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 go. Otherwise I get, I get completely distracted and like zone out. But what about if you haven't had any Coke yet? Then you put normal speed? Yeah, no, the same. <laughs> and, and then it's four times speed. Yeah. Um, three three times is like my max. I've only been able to do three times on some content and it has to be pretty basic. Anything that's more like complex, it needs God, to be. three times yeah. speed, bro. How could you it take was, any I did it for in? a few weeks. It was a bit too much. So Jesus. I'm back down to two times. Back, back down to two times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And back down to normal speed. I'm a, I'm a pleb. Normal I also speed, watch yeah. YouTube videos on two times speed. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're like, like shows and stuff. Yeah. You're like watching jiu-jitsu matches and you're like, fuck, yep. these dudes are fast, bro. I watch, I watch jiu-jitsu two times speed. I watch instructionals two times speed and not even just Danaher ones. <laughs> I watch, um, yeah, YouTube videos, chess videos, all two times speed. Do you, like when you go to the movies, you go to the cinema and you're like, this slow. is so slow. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not even kidding. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, I just installed like a plug-in on my browser so I watch everything two times. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, good. Fuck. Mm. Um, yeah, I've got a plug-in on my br br browser called like Adblocker. Yeah. Be <laughs> oh, no, very nice. <laughs> no. Don't use that, bro. We need that don't, ad rev. Yeah, <laughs> no, we don't have any ads. Uh, Anyways, so yeah. what what is the – today's topic – the reality of jujitsu. What do you mean by that? Because it was a topic, you know, behind the curtain that you came up with. What's what's going on there? Yeah, I guess it. You know, it's not dissimilar to things we've spoken about in the past. You know, like the the jujitsu grind and mm. you know the plateaus of jujitsu. But I've just been sort of interacting with a few people recently who are, let's say, I don't want to say your typical like blue belt and why blue belts quit or whatever, but that's mm. another episode we've done. But a few individuals where they've either hit that towards the end of their blue belt or maybe they're purple or brown or something, as well as, you know, white belts who are only two, three months in, right? And they're both seeing like some – I'm seeing some drop off in these sort of people yeah. that are ass but essentially for the same reason. So I'm seeing white belts who are only a couple months in realizing, holy shit, like this is really difficult. You know, they've kind of passed that initial beginner gain or that initial sort of frothing on mm -hmm. 
learning an armbar or learning a rear naked choke and, and being like, fuck, how cool is that, you know? And they've kind of passed that, you know, euphoric feeling and they're getting into a bit more of, well, this is what daily or weekly training is like. Yeah. And going, oh, my God, like I'm, I'm sore and, you know, fuck this shit and nah, it's not, it's not for me. But I'm also seeing these higher belts kind of hitting these these walls and it's like they they don't really grasp how, how difficult it is. Like they think that if they just keep showing up, they'll get better. And to some degree you will. Like, you know, if you're just giving, throwing out, you know, haphazard uh, expressions, you could just be like, man, just keep turning up and you'll get better. Like as long as you're on the mats. And, yeah, like I get that as well. Like it's, you know, you just got to keep putting in the time, just keep turning up, you know, the progression will come. Yeah, that's just like – generic pep talk but the reality of it is you know if you think getting your purple belt was hard what's hard even harder to get your brown if you think getting your brown was hard it's even harder to get your black belt and um i of course have thought of the perfect analogy to explain it sensational (laughs) we haven't had like a real crisp out of analogy in a while yeah and i've had some comments of people saying you know where the analogy's at yeah bro and you know, I hear some of my friends trying to come up with their own analogies oh, and they're just no. dog shit. Yeah. It's terrible. Ugh. Can't yeah. can't have that. Uh, Hit us. Um, so I think the getting let's say let's kind of put it in semi black and white terms and imagine that the end goal is getting your black belt. Right. Yep, let's yep. just I mean it's a very realistic goal that a lot of people make when they start jujitsu. Okay. They go, Well, I want to get my black belt and I want to be, you know everything that comes with that. Uh, I would say that the average person cannot get a black belt, right? That's what makes jiu-jitsu belts a little bit more prestigious than, you know, a taekwondo belt or karate whatever, belt. or a karate belt or whatever, <laughs> where I would say the less than average person can get it, right? Uh, you have to be lower than average to get <laughs> yeah. a fucking a black yeah. belt in karate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, That's hilarious. Along that lines, there's a few students I have that uh, – you know, I kind of, yeah, it's sort of like, oh, you're too smart for karate sort of thing. I've uh, got some students who I look at and I go, you know, if you were a little bit dumber, if you weren't so switched on, you could be really good at jujitsu in the sense that I've got a few people who, are, you know, are too smart to realize that there's way better options career wise than jujitsu. Uh, it's like, if you were just, you know, if you just were dropped on your head just a couple more times and you decided to pursue jujitsu yeah man you you could do great things but no you want a career you realize (laughs) you want to make money (laughs) um so uh, in my opinion if if you argue that saying the average person can get a black belt i would my counter argument would be you know well anyone can get a black belt if you throw standards out the window Mm. you know like I, i i don't think the even a brown belt, I don't think the average person can get it, you know. Uh, and I'm just talking about a black belt, I'm not talking about a world champion black belt to be a credible, legitimate black belt. The average person can't do that, I don't, I don't believe. And of course, if the average person can't get a black belt, of course, the average person can't go on to become a professional, you know, jujitsu athlete, essentially being a world class black belt. But the average person can do jujitsu. So here's my analogy for you. I would say the average person can learn how to surf, right? I would say not the average person can learn how to, you know, ride a 10-foot wave at Pipeline, you mm. know, and get barreled, right? There's plenty of people who can do that who get aren't – Get pitted. Pr- get pitted, bro. Get pitted. <laughs> Fully sick, guys. <laughs> right? Like there's plenty of people in the world who can do that who aren't professional surfers and aren't good enough to be professional surfers, but they're still well above average if you're catching waves and getting barrels and stuff on a wave like Pipeline or Chopu or, or you know, something right. like that. And then obviously it's then another step to go on and become a professional surfer. When you say, I just want to not push back, but pose a question to you here. When you say that the average person can't get a black belt, do you mean that they are incapable or do you mean that they are um, they're not going to get a black belt? As in, 
is in if you just show up and, and you know, do two times a week or whatever, then it probably won't happen for the vast majority of people. So uh, what I do you mean, mean there? I mean they're not capable. Right. Whether that mm. means physically capable or mentally capable. Okay. Okay. So – let me, uh, what about standards? Between? Let me let me put it into terms you can understand. <laughs> right? Simplify, dumb no, it down, bro. No, no, I'll put it into um into into uh, as someone who comes from bodybuilding, but okay. also not being someone who like takes gear and is jacked. But you understand the world. I'm oh, pretty jacked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you understand the world of bodybuilding and steroid use, and it's very. Well, I mean, anyone who's sitting here telling me that bodybuilders don't take gear is out of their mind. But, Obviously, yeah. there's natural categories, but you know, you look at the Phil Heaths even those, of the even world. Even those are filled with cheaters. They would be right. They are. You look at the the Phil Hearths of Phil, Phil Heath, yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah. and all those guys. Everyone knows yeah. they're on steroids, and they don't deny it. They just mm. don't publicly talk about it because they got sponsorships and shit mm. like that. But yeah, uh, so. People who don't understand steroids, and I don't really understand steroids, right? Mm. But the if you're overly uneducated about steroids, people think that they're just this magical drug that mm. you take and get huge. No, right? Steroids facilitate like a huge amount of recovery and growth and whatever. So in, in the simplest form, let's say you don't take steroids and you do your typical – you know, chest workout or whatever, you'll be sore for a while and, mm. you know, before you, you need time to recover before you can do chest again. You're on the gear. You can essentially do two chest workouts in the one day, sort of, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's about the, the recovery. And I remember watching, wasn't, wasn't pumping iron, but, you know, like a bodybuilding documentary thing. And one of the bodybuilders was, was sitting there and he said, you know, oh, people think that, you know, they could – Oh yeah, I could look like you if I took steroids, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, you couldn't, man. He's like, like just because you take the steroids doesn't mean you don't have to put in the work. Like, it's not like professional bodybuilders just take steroids and don't train. Like they train like nobody's business, right? Mm. So it's not like you can just, even if you take this substance, right, you still have to have the mental capacity to do all the training. To do it right, let's say yeah, you the dedication. That's the right. So you solve the motivation. physical limitations. Let's say this mm. one magical drug makes you physically capable of becoming a bodybuilder. Mm. Hypothetically, let's imagine all ignore genetics. Steroids makes you physically capable of mm. anything. You then still need the mental side, right? Not everyone's yeah going to have the dedication. You know the well, that's follow, what I was sort follow of all the nutrition about. and all that. So same sort of. Thing is what I'm saying about the average person getting a black belt. Even if you're physically capable, you you may not be mentally, emotionally capable mm. of, of, of achieving it because it is so so difficult. Because of the work required, you're saying. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about an analogy where you could say that not everyone is capable of running a ultra marathon, right? Like a hundred mile race. However, everyone is capable of turning themselves into the person that can run a hundred mile, hundred mile marathon. Therefore everyone is capable of running a hundred mile marathon. I get, I get what you're okay. saying. Um, but I don't think that's how the world works, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about this? What about this? Okay. So I, I, I mean, it's a good, I sorry for trying to derail you so hi hardcore, but I'm like struggling to, to come to terms with this. If you, if I presented someone to you or you pick someone out of like someone you've trained before, maybe they've quit or whatever, it doesn't matter. And, and you choose someone and you say, yeah, this person is not capable of being awarded their black belt, right? Mm. And then we go to that person and, you know, we, we wave a magic wand. We say, we'll give you one billion fucking dollars if you get a black belt in the next 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, like the... <sighs> I, I, I get the point you're making, mm. you know, it's, yeah, it's like that si similar sort of argument when people look at the amazing body transformations of, of Hollywood actors and you go, mm. well, I could do it if I was getting paid millions yeah. of dollars and had a personal chef and a personal trainer on hand <laughs> and steroids, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I get, I get what you're saying. But so, so if, if you're taking it to, to that ex extreme. Yeah. Yes. It's not practical. <laughs> Is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, yeah, exactly. It's just not. It's just not. 
not how how it works. And then even yeah. if we do, even if we do get that one extreme case, yeah, where you know Jeff Bezos does for some propose reason. that to <laughs> yeah. someone for some reason. Well, what if that person now has the motivation? Um, well, that to changes do it. who they are, right? Well, yeah, maybe, but it also doesn't necessarily mean they have the physical capability to mm. do it, right? Uh, Roids. <laughs> All you Sorry, need to do me. is just go to a, you know, something like a Gracie Baja and then you're guaranteed a black belt in like X That's amount right. of years. Man. Well, they Don't have, they, you know, they have one of their, their slogans or mottos is something along the lines of, you know, jujitsu for everyone, which is, is a great, you know, it's a great positive message and I'm more, I'm all for more people training jujitsu yeah. and the growth of our sport. Uh, however, even in, in your, you know, couple of years of doing jujitsu you've seen people come and go and yeah eddie it, it unfortunately it is not for everyone that's correct right? yeah i've like, seen people no, leave no, nothing is for everyone that's you know? very true like and it can change as well it could be for you today but not tomorrow yeah you know again like talking about fucking surfing it's not for yeah. everyone or rock climbing people you know yeah. some some you know some people, you might be the most physically gifted person in the fucking world, but what if, I don't know, what if you're scared of heights? Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's rock climbing is not for everyone, mm-hmm. you know. Playing an, a musical instrument is not for, nothing is for everyone, mm. right? Some people are, God, I say this all the time, my wife owns half of a jiu-jitsu gym and she doesn't train jiu-jitsu. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> she's like, nah, wrestling around with sweaty people, not for me. Yeah. And that's fine. Same right? with my my fiance, she's like, no, nah, that's that's lame. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's like, that's like, gay. Yeah, gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's really interesting when you mention like seeing people come and go. I've seen people leave jujitsu or just stop training, where I never would have guessed. You know what I mean? Like when they first started or whatever. You know, it's not necessarily that they're like frothing on it like super hardcore, like you know. But I've seen people leave just for for obviously they have their own reasons, but inexplicably drop off the face of the earth when they have every reason to stay. Like all their friend network uh, is is training jiu-jitsu, their relatives train jiu-jitsu or whatever, or like they're, you know, really into it. Um, they're, they're at blue belt or whatever, and then they just fucking stop. It's like, that's crazy. I don't get it. Yeah. Like, you know, and if 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 people decide to to quit or, or to stop, they're well within their right, you know. You can – Nah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You never leave. If, if you choose not to continue doing an activity, that's fine. There's yeah. plenty of sports that I did previously that I no longer do. Yeah, and, okay. and so that's fine, you know. Um, but if – I think it's kind of like you need to if – if I'm talking about the white belt who stops after a couple of months, mm. that's fine, right? Like there's – you don't know until you until you do it, right? So that's them just figuring out through experience that it's not for them, mm. and that's fine. They gave it a red hot crack. Yeah, exactly. They they, they gave it a go and they yeah. decided it's not for them. Or yeah. you know, someone picks up skateboarding, they froth on it for the first little while, but after one too many like hits in the shin with the skateboard, they yeah. decide, man, you know what? Like, I'm forty. Not, I don't uh, need to be doing this. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You know, man, I don't really like falling over on concrete. That shit yeah. fucking hurts. It's not for me. Yeah. and that's fine. They gave it a go, right? But it's you know, more the the higher belts that, you know, it never – jiu-jitsu never gets to a point where it's easy. It's never easy, ever. Like, look look at the best guys in the world. Look at, okay, what's a room full of the top athletes at the moment that has heaps of content on YouTube, B-team, right? Yep. Like, you look at that – do you think those – look at Craig, whose people regard as the second best – Guy in the world at the moment, no gi, right? Because uh, he comes second at everything. Yeah, right? second best, <laughs> yeah. second best uh, Like you see him not working hard when he's training with lower belt. Like, I mean, it's never well, easy. He's fucking working hard. It's not yeah. like you get to a point and you're like, ah. Yeah. Now, you know. Now I can relax. Now I can relax and always win. It's never finished. Right. And it only gets progressively harder and it also obviously gets progressively harder as you get older and your body starts to struggle to keep up and Mm. all these other things. So, you know, it's, I get frustrated when I see people who aren't putting in the work or aren't, yeah, they're essentially not putting in the work and expecting that they should be getting better, you know, and they're wondering Mm. why they're losing to that, you know, blue belt 
And it's like, well, because that blue belt's like 15 years younger than you and trains twice a day every day. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's multiple factors to take into consideration. Yeah, and that blue belt seems Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but there's also just the, the reality of what comes with, with you know, the, the certain rank of, of belts. Like you can't, you can't say, oh, I, I want to be a dad or I want to be a, be a mum, but I don't want any of the responsibility that comes with it. No, that's not how it works. It's kind of like God damn it. You, you, <laughs> you can't say, oh, I, I, I want to be a black belt, but I don't want to have to be as good as a black belt. Yeah. Man, you know, or oh, I want my brown belt, but I don't want the purple belts to come after me. That's just kind of part of the, the, the competitiveness of the sport. You know, if, if you want, you know, whatever rank, you, you've got to you've defend got to, your belt. Well, sort of. I mean, yes, yeah. Like I don't want to put it as like sort of concrete as that, but there's everything else that comes with it, mm. right? Uh, I want my blue belt, but I don't want to ask – I don't want to answer questions from white belts. Like people are going to look up to all this shit that comes with it, right? Mm. And so sometimes just people want it, but they don't realize really how difficult it is, everything that comes with it, the amount of work that needs to go in, you know. And I think I've explained this before when talking about why why blue belts quit is people put in, you know, let's say let's just pick a whatever number, 50% work and that achieves them their blue belt. And they go, oh, there's the magical number. If I just keep putting in 50% work, I'll get my purple, my brown and my black. Oh, well, if 50% got you your blue, fuck, bro, it's going to take like 70% for you to get your purple. And then when you get your purple, you need 80% to get your brown. Then you get your brown, it's going to take 100%. It's going to take everything to get your black. Yeah, it just gets – How it should be, yeah, at least. Yeah, it gets progressively more difficult, you know. So – And that is the reality of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and it's actually a bit in my – you know, a bit counter to what a lot of people say. People – it's well known in the jiu-jitsu community. People say like, oh, man, blue belt's the toughest belt. And I think blue belt's the toughest belt – Say again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> say what? <laughs> I think blue belt's the toughest belt emotionally in the sense that for a lot of people blue belts where they kind of make the decision to whether they quit or continue like for for, for some people blue belts kind of that turning point of really realizing what lies ahead Mm. you know it's almost like one of those memes where you've got like you know a fork in the road and you've got the the easy way out and then the fucking treacherous treacherous trial like road ahead. So I think in that regard, blue belt can be the most difficult belt. But, Mm. you know, if you're talking progression and if you're talking about black belt being the last belt, right, brown belt's the hardest belt. Mm. Like because it's, like I said, if you're talking, if you're saying black belt's the finish line. It's so funny. Everyone says that it's the easiest. Like once you, yeah. like A lot of people say they go, oh man, once you're brown belt, you're pretty much a black belt. I disagree. Well, you're not pretty much a black. I, I disagree with that as well because I've met some pretty shitty black. <laughs> no offense to anyone, but like when you get brown belt, the what I've heard some people say is that once you achieve brown belt, like you're already drinking from the Kool Aid. You know what I mean? If you've trained long enough and hard enough to be awarded a legitimate brown belt, and then you're on the final frontier, like you are, you can see. The, the, the final belt, the black belt, the, the, the prize that you've been gunning for for your entire ju- jiu-jitsu career, like more or less different levels for different people. But once you achieve that, it becomes easier because it's a very clear defined goal and it's like one more big push, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, sometimes. I think that's the way it's been described. That's how I, uh, you know, compartmentalize it, if you will. Yeah, but let's look, let's look at it like it's uh – like an ultra marathon or like an mm-hmm. Ironman or a triathlon or something like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, sometimes you could argue that last hundred meters or whatever is the easiest. Cause yep. it's like, you're getting that, you know, you got all that endorphins and you got all that sort of like second, third, fourth wind. It's yeah. like the finish line is right there. So you get that, you know, that boost of, you don't know where that extra energy comes from and whatever. But we also see those like fail videos of yep. people collapsing. Literally right just before, cannot. Yeah, yeah. You know. That's a good that's a, actually a good analogy. I I think it's it can be seen as being the easiest. I think I think it is and, sh- and should be the hardest. Mm. Right. And um mm. you know, and it might 
I just don't think it's necessarily maybe emotionally that hard, but in terms of the work you've got to put in, I think it takes the work you put in to get to get your brown. I think you need to put twice that work in to get to get your your black. In my opinion, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's, again, I look at it like like a, a lot of university degrees and whatever. Like you could have made it all this way to becoming a doctor, but like that fucking final exam, man, is going to be super rigorous, super hard. And you're going to have to put in so much work to make sure you pass it, you know, Mm -hmm. that final year of of med school or whatever, or, you know, you've, cause up until then you'd been going along with, you know, this is just a fake patient. This is now a real patient that you can kill, you know, (laughs) like don't fuck it up. You know, there's a lot more on the line, you know? Yeah. You want the black belt? You got to get everything that comes with it. You want to be a doctor? You, you come. I want to be a doctor, but I don't want to run the risk of killing someone. Mm. Well, yeah, probably in the wrong profession. Mm. It's harder than than people are willing willing to come to terms with. And I'm just a dude who got a black belt. Like I'm not, I'm not even someone who who went on to become like a world champion or something. Like the work that I put in got me where I am today, and it's probably drop in the ocean of the work required to go on and become, you know, a a Craig Jones or something. Mm. And I think that's the beauty of jujitsu is the, the standards model. Like the, the fact that it is such a long journey, it's not a, what shouldn't be a McDojo karate style thing of just rock up, pay your tuition fees, train for three years or whatever. Um, you know, purchase this black belt accelerator program and you can get it. You know, you're you're you can be a child and have it. Yeah, it's like the the memes on Reddit where it's like people find out that you train jujitsu. Oh, what belt are you? Oh, I'm a blue belt. Oh, my my 12 year old son's a black belt in karate. He could kick your ass. You know, it's like yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. It's, so <laughs> it's, it's that meme, right? So I think that's the attraction to jujitsu for some people. For some people, for maybe some A types or whatever. Insert your terminology here. For some people, for it, the fact that it is so fucking difficult is what makes it awesome. For me, the fact that jiu-jitsu is so fucking hard makes it really awesome and it attracts me to the journey. Makes the, it worth it. Makes it worth it. The fact that I have, you know, I can count on two hands the amount of black belts that we have in the gym and it's like, you know, a reverse pyramid. Contextually, it makes sense that getting a black belt is difficult. It should be difficult. And that's what is so that's what really attracts me to the sport is that, you know, there is this um, clear progression and not only that, but it's, it's a skill-based progression when you're training against the same people every day and you know, you're able to perform better or maybe hit a move that you um, you've been struggling with or whatever. It's, it's, it's very fucking difficult. The sport is very difficult and that's what makes it so engaging and interesting for someone like me. And I I get that. Yeah. And even, Going back to what I was saying at the start about the average person not being able to do it, you know, even if you do put in the time and and whatever, the, you know, the average person isn't perhaps going to be willing to put in the 10 plus years or essentially some could argue the lifetime Mm. of, of training that it takes because realistically if you're someone who gets a black belt, you're then above average, in my opinion, if we assume that it's a credible black belt. And usually to achieve that, you need to have prioritized jujitsu and made it like more or less a fundamental part of, of your life. Mm. You know, so like I said, you would argue that it becomes a lifelong journey. So the average person, even if they train really hard for X amount of years, they're perhaps not you know, training jujitsu as this sort of fundamental part of their life, which means, you know, for me, it's going to be really difficult for that person to, to ever get a black belt. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it needs to become your career. Not, not at all. Right. There's plenty of people who, who achieve black belts and are very good, very tough and, you know, and not, not training jujitsu for a career, not even competitively. I mean, maybe they don't teach jujitsu. They're not mm-hmm. interested in that side of it. But yeah, it would have to be a, a, a fundamental pillar in their life for them to to be invested enough to do what it takes to get a black belt. Mm. No, that's a good point. I have to I have to agree with a lot of that, and um, I think that is a big problem with some people's mentality in in going into a sport 
like jujitsu, if you're purely in the sport to to be awarded and to be recognized and to receive recognition in the form of like a promotion, then I think that you're going to struggle mentally to get through unless like you're obsessed with it or, you know, that, that goal is enough for you. But I think like without sounding too cliche and too lame here, jujitsu for jujitsu's sake or training jujitsu purely to progress yourself and to be better than you were yesterday and immerse yourself and put in the work because you enjoy the work. You have to enjoy the work, right? If you don't enjoy putting in the hard work for jujitsu, what, what's the point? Yeah, there's definitely, uh, yeah, you, you, you have to, you do have to enjoy the work. It's yeah. Like, uh, you know, I was saying before the, the bodybuilding thing and the guy saying, you know, even if you took steroids, you couldn't do what I, what I do, you know, I could take steroids. I could take more steroids than fucking Conor McGregor and I still wouldn't get jacked because I don't fucking enjoy lifting weights, yeah. you know. You don't, and, you don't do it, yeah. And, and even with the gear, I'm not going to put in the work mm. that is required for the for the muscle gains, you know, because I don't enjoy the work. Yeah, sure. Maybe I might put in the work for a few months or whatever while you're, while you're buzzing and living on, you know, on cloud nine, but it takes – years right it takes a long time and if you if you don't like putting in the work like if you don't like well no one likes to get the shit beaten out of them but if you don't um, i kind of like it <laughs> yeah if you're not okay with it yeah. i should say then yeah like maybe jujitsu is not for you like you're not going to get to a point where there's no one beating you up even even gordon let's even take gordon ryan even though we know, like, I mean, he hasn't been defeated in competition for however long, but that doesn't mean that he's not getting defeated in the gym or even if he's not getting beaten up in the gym, I know for a fact he does a lot of specific training. I bet you he does heaps of training where he've got, he's got fucking one of his teammates, um, uh, fucking what's his name? His name slipped from my head. Oh, Benoni. Yeah, right, uh, who – I bet you he does specific training with um with Jean Carlo on his yeah. back, right? And probably getting ripped rear naked choke across his face. Yeah. And you know, just getting smashed, getting the crap beaten out of you is a f- just part of the sport. Be like <laughs> be like wanting to yeah, wanting to be a surfer, but being like, don't like getting wet. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck, bro. <laughs> Let's see how long you last. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just part of it. Yeah. Oh. I want to go to the snow, but I'm not a fan of the cold. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, you know. And I, if people choose to quit and not continue, that's okay, right? They, but don't don't just keep showing up and not putting in the work, just thinking that oh, well, just because I'm here. Man, it's a, what does putting in the work look like? Um, misery. <laughs> 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 no, like. I don't know. It's obviously, it's going to be different for everyone. It's going to be different. It depends what the gym, what gym you train at. You know, it depends what other things you have going on in your life. Uh, you know, but what did it? What did it look like for me? Well, if if I go, so white belt's obviously the easiest belt because everyone is a white belt, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so white belt was just whatever, just train. Got my blue belt. That's when started taking it more professionally what putting in the work looked like was essentially for me and it's funny like saying what i was doing at blue belt is probably what just the progression of the sport there's probably some people out there that are doing that they're like oh man that's just what i need to do to you know to win a competition like nowadays like people you come across white belts now who train like professional athletes like it's crazy but uh for me, putting in the work at Blue Belt was I trained 7 till 8.30 in the morning and then after that I would, you know, and then I had a break essentially until 11 o'clock, right? But from 8.30 till 11 o'clock in that window I would usually do some type of like strengthening or conditioning sort of training. So it might be lifting weights maybe it was doing a circuit maybe it was like doing yoga or something it would be like some complementary training and then from 11 till 12 or sometimes from like 10 30 till 12 something like that i would do uh, an hour of drilling 
right? An hour or hour and a half of just like um, just drilling with a partner. And then from 12 till two o'clock was competition training. And that was my day, Monday to Friday. So like three and a half hours jujitsu for most days. Yeah, so three plus and a half an extra, hours like of just jujitsu. Plus no, if you include the drilling, it was four and a half hours of jujitsu. So we've lost we've lost like ninety nine percent of the audience, and I get this comment a lot, like a lot. And any time I talk about my training schedule, or anything like that, and mine's not even as hectic as yours, um, particularly on a video that I put out when I was like full time in the navy, and I was training a lot, and I put out what I do every day, and people are like, well, you obviously don't work, or what do you even do for a living, or like, well, yeah, I didn't even get to that part. Yeah, so like, um. So that was my training, right? Mm. So that would be four and a half hours of jujitsu, mm-hmm. and um, and yeah, and then some other complementary training in there. Mm. And that was more or less Monday to Friday. Mm. Uh, you know, some days I wouldn't lift because I didn't fucking want to, or because I was tired, or if you know, competition training. Yeah. <laughs> but then inside of that as well. So then, between the seven a.m. class and the drilling at eleven o'clock. I would often, as well as doing some complimentary training, yeah. I would go to work in that time as well where I would go teach English. So I'd go to like, uh, you know, then leave the gym and go to either the school or I had private students, I would go to their house. So I would go and like teach English for one hour, two hours, depending, and then competition training. And then after that, I would go home, have lunch, have a shower, and then I would go to work. So how, how many hours did you work a day? I mean, in terms of having a job job, not that much, like maybe uh, would depend on the day, but like four or five, yep. you know, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. So you're more or less working part-time in a week, like 20, 20 to 25 yeah. hours a yeah. week. Yep. Yeah, I would okay. say that. That makes sense. Yeah. And, um, and that, was, that was a blue belt. That's mm. what it took. At purple belt, I did the same, except my training changed from – mornings and 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 lunch times to training um lunch times in the evenings mm-hmm. right the reason for that was it just freed up more time for me to work in the morning yeah I understand. so then i would kind of like just um teach from seven in the morning teach english so i would teach like um get most of my work done in the morning so then i could train at lunch go mm-hmm. home have dinner whatever uh train at lunch, then go home for lunch, blah, 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 then back to the gym mm-hmm. in the evening. But as well as that, I, you know, I had two surgeries at Purple Belt. So like I was also doing all on top of that, all rehab and everything. Mm-hmm. Then Brown Belt was, um, was the same again, but I also then started as well as teaching English, I then also at Brown Belt started teaching jiu-jitsu. So some private student, some private classes on the side as mm. well as teaching at the Alliance in Sao Paulo mm. as well as a sister gym that they had. So I kind of had a few hours here and there of, of teaching jiu-jitsu as well. Um, and then I left Brazil as a Brown Belt, still under Fabio though, and then still training and setting up my gym and everything and traveling to – you know, still continue to train with Fabio. And so people talk about it being, you know, they're struggling to progress from brown to black belt. Motherfucker, I was like getting on a plane to fly across the world to to keep progressing, you know, like it's it, it, it only gets harder. And then all through these belts is the, the competition side as well. Like I yeah, competed the regular. most yeah. at blue belt. Yeah. My amount of competition attendance has dwindled – like progressively gotten less after each surgery, mm. you know. Uh, I I often say to people that, you know how when you hear people say, oh, you know, I could have been this if I didn't have so many injuries or whatever. Yeah, whatever. That's not my, <laughs> yeah, that's not my case. Like yeah. I think I think I potentially could have uh, been one of those people. <laughs> to say that, yeah. <laughs> to say that. Yeah. So, so what I mean is, if I had zero injuries mm. and surgeries, I mean, obviously injuries happen, but if I had zero sort of like, for lack of a better term, career ending injuries, I don't think I had it in me to go on and become a world champion, right? Like I didn't, I don't think I had the mental side for that, you know? Yeah, I believe I'm above the average person because I achieved a credible black belt, but I was not 
you know, so yeah, I could have been that surfer getting barreled in pipeline, but I wasn't going to go on and, you know, win a world surfing tour. Uh, however, if I did, let's say hypothetically, I did have the mental capacity to be a world champion, I think I would have been stopped by, by my injuries. injuries. I think I could have been one of those people to be able to say <laughs> yeah, if it I wasn't for my injuries. <laughs> for example. I, such a mind fuck. <laughs> yeah, I could have been what I currently look as, unfortunately, what I look at um, at Nicky Ryan as. You know, I, yeah. I think unfortunately Nicky Ryan may go on to – never win a massive title, never win ADC or something. I hope he does because I really like the kid. I mean, I've yeah. never met him, but, you know, I yeah. really like what I see of him mm. and I obviously really like his jiu-jitsu. But, and the dude's like 21 or whatever and mm. had three knee surgeries. Like I think He's Nicky, had a rough ride. I think Nicky Ryan is someone who legitimately, if he doesn't achieve big titles, could look back and go, man, if I didn't have these injuries, like I could have been ADCC world I champion. Agree. I could have been one of the best in the world. I agree. Because there's people who have had, yeah, like even take me, for example, who's not competing at that level. There's people who've had more injuries than me, but there's also people who compete at a far higher level than me who have had less injuries and mm. surgeries, mm. you know? And yeah, poor Nicky Ryan. I think he's someone who will – go on to be that dude. Mm. I hope not. I hope I'm wrong. You know, I hope he, this last surgery was kind of like the last one and I hope he's you know, now all good, but. I hope so too, for his sake, you know. Anyway, like it's fucking hard so bro. And you're. Oh. I had a question though, like you were in a unique circumstance. You were, you had a very, your goals were different than achieving a black belt, right? Uh, yeah. You're, you're, you weren't, all this work that you were doing, we need to put it into context for those that don't, you know, know your background, maybe it's the first episode. All of what you did in Brazil to achieve your black belt wasn't just to achieve your black belt. You were, it was your university. It was your Harvard. It was you studying every day with the end goal in mind to be a credible, well-rounded black belt that owns a school, right? Yeah. Your goal was to open a gym. So that's not the standard. Hence why I was like emphasizing, okay, so we're, we're working 25 hours a week outside of jiu-jitsu and then you're working like more than 25 hours a week inside of jiu-jitsu. So you're pretty much working full time, but half of that is if you will study for yeah. jiu-jitsu for your long-term career, right? So yeah. imagine, re, re-listen to that, but have the context um, for those listening that, that replaced jiu-jitsu with university and that's what it was. That's right. Like look at, you know, look at anyone going through university, mm. even if it's not some big high paying job you know, anyone going through university, you look at them, bro, they're, they're, they do two things in their life. Mm. They're either at uni, mm. you know, at uni slash studying or they're working their shitty part-time job. Yeah, to sustain on themselves. On the side at, at a cinema or yeah. at a fucking – And that's what you were or doing. waiting tables or whatever yeah. it is, you know. So I, I was doing a similar thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, yeah, I was doing it at a particularly difficult gym as well of mm. the end goal in mind for it to be my career. Yeah. Like I said, not everyone pursuing a black belt needs to pursue it like it's going to be a career. Which However, is you still kind of need to be pursuing it like it's a university course or something yeah. that you want to pass. This is why I was sort of leading into, so that's what you did because um, the the original question or the, the sort of the conversation was like, okay, so what does putting in the work look like? And then obviously you illustrated what putting in the work was for you, but that was also putting in the work uh, to, to open a gym. So that was like the gold standard, if you will, if we'll just call it that for, for now. What would it look like for a, you know, because we already established going from white to blue, you show up, you're going to get a blue belt eventually, right? Mm -hmm. So from blue to purple, what would putting in the work look like for your standards for uh, someone that isn't necessarily planning on, opening a gym, but takes jujitsu seriously. So don't go easy on them, but like, what would it be in that sense? What would you expect? Yeah. I mean, I, it's hard to just put a fixed number or something on it, but you know, as if I just want to give a simple sort of, you can this, use me as an this example. This is what I'd like to see. I would want to see someone training, you know, Four or five times a week, okay. and also, Easy. yeah, <laughs> he's a low brother. Yeah. Four, five, four, five, five, yeah, four, four, five times a week, and you know, I would also like to see self study. Mm -hmm. More specifically, I would like to see 
I don't – watching instructionals and shit is fine, but, you know, it it is a physical sport. Like drilling is a lot better. Yeah, drilling is – Yeah. You got to watch the theory, but then you got to do the practical. Yeah, you can't you can't just sit back and watch forty hours of you know um, fucking Betty Crocker or whatever videos and or what's the Martha, oh, Martha Stewart yeah, thing and be like, be I'm a chef. a chef. Yeah, like no, you got to actually you got to actually like practice. Yeah, you know, so you physically got to drill and whatever. That's what I'd want to see, right? And um, and I guess it's. It's more of the same from purple to brown and, and brown to black. However, they're just – it's kind of like the this, the the formula is the same. It just becomes harder to execute, you know. So it becomes, um, you know, like your your roles become harder. They become more intense. They, you know, again, if I, if I look at a, a surfing analogy, like you're still – like paddling out and catching the wave, but the waves are just getting bigger, mm. right? Like it's just getting more difficult to do the same thing. If that if that makes sense, it's not my best analogy, but do you you know what I mean? Like, no, I get you. Where does that difficulty come from? Well, I think the the difficulty comes from you know you're starting to drill more complicated techniques. You're right. starting right, right, to right. understand more complicated techniques. You're starting to troubleshoot more difficult situations. You're starting to you know. Um, you're starting to potentially develop your own techniques. Uh, you're also, like I said, the 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 roles should only get harder. You know, um, like the let's okay, let's maybe not take you as an example for this because by the time you get your brown belt, I'll probably be old and retired. And, ah, <laughs> I'll be fucking dead. <laughs> You'll be 80, bro. <laughs> but um oh shit. Let's look at someone, you know, whatever that from a few years back or however long. If I go if I look at a blue belt of mine from 5 years ago, let's say for example, mm. and then let's say that blue belt is now a purple belt or a brown mm-hmm. belt or a black belt. How I was rolling with them when they were a blue belt is not how I'm rolling with them now as a black belt, you know. So it's you holding uh, you holding back on me, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> radio. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but you know, um, no, y- yeah, yes, yes, and no, right? Because, for example. Let's say, like the, how do how do I explain this? There's kind of, there's only. Let me think how 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 I can say this. It's, it's kind of like this. Let's say, which which would you rather? Let's say we go into a boxing match, mm-hmm. right? Which do you think is worse on the re- on the receiving end? If you get knocked out within the first thirty seconds of round one, mm-hmm. or if you go the distance, the full twelve rounds, and just get the shit beaten out of you, and then lose, right? Like, yeah. fi- like physically, which ones? Oh, physically, which one's harder? Getting the shit beaten out yeah, of you, of course. Right? Of so course. it's kind of like, um, it's kind of. Like, you know, when people talk about – oh, I don't really want to say this. Actually, no, I'm not going to say that. on. But, uh, so if there's a big skill difference, if you've got like a black belt and a white belt, yeah, there's only so much – let's say, for example, you, you know, a white belt goes to me, no, no, man, like, you know, here's a million dollars. I'll sign whatever waiver. Give me everything you've got. There's only so much I can give you if you if like if you get yeah, tap if away. you get knocked out in the first yeah. first thirty seconds, you know, like totally. It's it's why you know it's why a black belt rolling with a white belt for the white belt it won't even necessarily feel like you know bear with me won't feel like it's that hard of a roll or like let's say for example if you went up against Gordon Ryan mm. it's not going to feel like 
it's a hard role because the skill difference, it would be the same if I went with Gordon Ryan. I'm just using as an example, like a blue belt against someone of that caliber because the skill difference is so big. It's like, it's going to be like, you're going to get, you're going to get tapped out before you've even broken a sweat, but then put you with like Toby or Eric, like someone closer to your level. Mm. Like it's a fucking war, even mm. though, Gordon Ryan is way better than Eric. It doesn't mean he's going to physically beat the shit out of you harder. So this is what I mean is in it when I'm saying like you're doing the same thing, but the waves are getting bigger, mm. you know, like, so even though I'll roll with you today and I might go like a hundred percent hard with you, it's not like I instantly tap you out, but like, you know, it, it reaches a certain like climax, but the more that you're, as you progress and the more that you can push back, the more I have to push back. And like, there's where like the real hardness comes from. And that's why, you know, it's, um, it only gets harder. That's why I'm rolling with a brown belt of mine, different to how I'm rolling with the, uh, that same person when they were a white belt, blue belt, purple belt. Mm. Yes, perhaps there's some degree of holding back, but not even necessarily, even the more competitive guys like you, like Eric, who, I can roll with and not hold back because I know you're cool with it and, you know, you can handle it and it's all good. But there's still that skill difference there. As that gap closes, that war is going to be way more, you know. Mm, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's kind of like if you were a sprinter and you, you're you running, say you're a 100-meter sprinter, they require that 100 meters to get to their max speed. If I capped your your distance like twenty meters, it's like, well, I, I can't even get up to where I'm yeah, yeah, running yeah. my fastest Fucking speed. Look at that analogy. An analogy. That's a mate. good Fuck. one, bro. That's a good one. We'll put yeah, it on my yeah, resume. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So it just, you know, so the, the recipe is kind of the same. Mm. It just kind of becomes harder to execute, you know. So if you're thinking you're gonna get you know, whatever color belt and things get easier. Like it, it doesn't get easier, man. Black belt's not easier. Like it's always fucking hard, you know, but that's also what's good about it. Right. Yeah. And you don't necessarily. And it doesn't always have to be hard. Yeah. Not, you don't always have to paddle out a pipeline. You yeah. can get a fucking longboard bro and just cruise at Malibu and still have fun. You're still surfing and whatever, but. So here the surfboard is the gym you're at. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the Malibu board with the big greasy Baja sticker on yeah. them. Always dump on them just because it's easy. Yeah, it's low hanging fruit, yeah. but no. An easy target. They're, they're cool. <laughs> they're, they're cool. I, don't cool, actually, cool. <laughs> I don't actually have a problem with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, so just to kind of come full circle back to where we started, you know, if it's a newer person who's giving it a crack and after one, two, three months they've realised it's not for them, maybe they've – had that maybe they have or haven't had that first injury but you know they're just like well man i'm always bruised i'm always sore i kind of always counter that argument with yeah i know plenty of people who sit at a desk and are fucking sore Mm. like you can and especially as you age man like Mm. uh, i went to i um i went to a a funeral of this guy the other week but he was passed away he was 94 it wasn't like he passed away out of nowhere and up until he broke his hip he was super active like i mean that's the hear that all the time with elderly people right they have a fall they break a hip or whatever like man he broke his hip fucking playing golf he swung too hard fell over broke his hip that's nuts you know like so like but how many times do you hear of like elderly people falling over breaking their hip just like Mm -hmm standing up out of a chair or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like, as you get older, man, like shit always hurts, you know? So I may as well be hurt doing jujitsu than (laughs) be hurt doing nothing. Yeah. You're going to be sore anyway. Like your body starts falling apart anyway. It's the cost of entry as well. It's the price. It's the price of, you know, the, it's, it's a price you have to pay. You know what I mean? Like your reward. Yes. You have to put in hard work and you risk injury and, you know, shit hurting sometimes and blah, blah, blah but your reward is skills in jujitsu. Yeah. So yeah, the newest students, if you do decide it's not for you, that's fine. You know, you gave it a go. It's not for everyone for, you know, more experienced students. If they do choose to quit, that's okay too. But you know, don't, don't keep barely trying and and thinking you're going to get better. It's fucking hard, man. And it's progressively more difficult. Do you think the frustration maybe that you can have particularly in your position as being an instructor, when you see a student 
like uh, whatever, say they're a purple belt, right? And they're frustrated because they're now losing or they, they feel like they've regressed. They're losing the, you know, the, the blue belts or whatever, or people coming after them and, and they want their brown belt and, you know, but they're not putting in the work to get their brown belt, but they're constantly like complaining or, or, you know, expressing their frustration that they're not getting better, nothing's changing. But you look at their training program, and they're like, well, bro, you, you train twice a week. And when you, you show up, you, you know, you, you pick your roles, you, you rolling half the time with the white belts. Like, is, is, do you get frustrated with that? Or is it more like this, this, you just want to get the message across that, Hey, like, not that everyone needs to try harder, but Hey, it's just going to get harder. A bit of both. I just, as the title said, I just want the, the reality to mm. go through. Do you get frustrated if you have a client uh, for anyone who's newish to, to this podcast, Kieran being a nutritionist, do you get frustrated when you have a client sitting across from you and they're like, I'm just not losing any weight as they're eating a Snickers? I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I, yes. You know, yes, like, I yeah. uh, like, or yeah. people wanting to put on muscle and they're like, you know, they lift once a week and then they whinge. Every time I fucking lift, like, I'm not. I can't lift anything heavy. Then I'm sore the next day. Yeah, and I'm not get. It's like, well, because bro, like, f- like, strap in, bro. Mm. Let's fucking go. Like, and I know that's sometimes that can be a bit of useless advice. I'm not just telling you to harden up. I'm just telling you. Some to, people need to harden up. <laughs> yeah, some people do, but I'm yeah. also just, you know, just that dose of reality of yeah. This, I get this you. is yeah. This is what comes with it, and this is this is what's required. And I remember it was said to me, you know, like when I, when I first joined the, the gym in Brazil, I remember one of the first things I said to all, like a bunch of the black belts who were already there and already world champion black belts. And I was a blue belt gringo. And I said, I want to be a world champion because that was my initial goal. Right. And then um, again, like I said previously, I don't think I mentally had it in me, but it definitely that, that dream towards the end of blue belt and and after my first surgery and everything, that's when sort of reality set in for me. But I even even at that early days, I knew I still wanted to open a gym and teach. But mm. when I was younger and I had more of a drive to to compete and whatever. And I remember it was one of the first things I said. And I kind of just got laughed at that, you know, with this sort of they're like, I don't think you realize like how hard that is to do. And I, and and I just had this kind of well, fucking watch me. Were and they right? Well, do, do I have a world championship? <laughs> no, that's not that's not fair. That's not fair. What I think that you know whether or not you could do it is is another question or another conversation. Um, but do you think that at the time you didn't realize what it took? Do you think you underestimated the difficulty? Um, because I underestimated the difficulty of achieving. I knew it was hard to get a black belt in jujitsu, and that's what originally attracted me to the sport, one of the many reasons. But I didn't realize how hard it would be until like even even now I probably don't re- fully realize how hard it is until I've got one. Uh, I don't know if they were right. I, I don't know why my expectations were already kind of pretty well aligned as to how difficult it is. I think I – from the beginning was, I don't know, I don't know how I was educated about it, but I think I was pretty well aware that it, that it, um, that, you know, it took some people 10 to 15 years, you know, to get a black belt. Um, in saying that I would be lying if I said there weren't times where I thought about quitting, Mm. particularly living in a foreign country with no money, not being able to train because I've just had my third surgery, you know, uh, living in the fucking slums and yeah, shit. Yeah, living in the living in yeah, feces infested fucking shitholes. Yeah. Uh, you know, having a roommate who was also a jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu training partner, you know, steal money from me and just living in shit conditions. God damn it, JT. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I I didn't think about quitting. And just like thrown in the towel, mm. but I'm um, um, I think I was a bit too stubborn for that. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I don't think 
They were right. I think maybe if we're in terms of like world champion, what it takes, perhaps that was hard or not necessarily harder, but perhaps I just didn't realize I wasn't capable of it. Well, you're never going to realize until you do it. Yeah. For most but, people anyway. But yeah, I think I was for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know how I was educated in it, but I, I, I believe I was pretty, pretty on board with the, the how much time it took and how, how difficult it was. So I really wanted it because it is not easy. You know, it was the difficulty. It was the challenge, not the challenges in. I then got my black belt and was like, did it. I quit, mm-hmm. you know, but it was, it was the, how hard it was that, that appealed to me. Although I do remember now talking about this when I first moved to Brazil. So I, I first started training in Canada and the, when I left the gym in Canada, even before I got my blue belt, when I was like a four strap white belt or whatever, I was already the best dude in the gym. Not because I was a prodigy, right? Just because. Because you got long limbs. <laughs> yeah. It's just because there was, I think only like one dude in the gym. Curtis was his name, this blue belt who could beat me. But uh, that, that was essentially it, right? It just wasn't a, it wasn't much of a jujitsu program going on. The The original instructor had moved to a different gym and, you know, so it was kind of like I was a big fish in a small pond. And I remember like first moving to Brazil and I remember the first class I went to was not the competition class. It was like the 7 a.m. class. And I, which like a lot of gyms, the morning class is the working professionals, right? Mm-hmm. They go to the gym in the morning, then they shower and off they go to work. Jiu-jitsu, they might do it five days a week, but it's still more of a hobby for them. And I remember even though I had my blue belt for like a month, I could pretty I was pretty much smashing the 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 blue and purple belts in that class. And then when I went to the competition class, which is only for blue belts and up, oh man, like the the dose of reality of how shit I was just like slammed me right in the face. I remember just like like physically crying about it. I was so upset. And my father in law said, Well, you know, you if you had moved here and were already the best here, like it would have been a waste of time. Like you moved here to kind of yeah. be at the bottom again. And it wasn't like that was an expectation I wasn't aware of. But, yeah, I remember that moment of of, of punish. Like there, there were multiple times I left the gym when I was like a, a blue and purple belt. There were a lot of times I left the gym – with 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 very very moist eyes, you know they were, mm. yeah, really sad. Like heaps of times, heaps of times, yeah, so many times. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have flashbacks, yeah. Just imagine like the Vietnam era fucking flashback yeah. goes through your mind. Yeah, but you know, I I, I I always went back the next day. Like, yeah, all, like always. Yeah, you know, and but yeah, the. So even without the surgeries, there were times I thought about quitting, but yeah, I never did. And I never will, Kieran. Mm. I'll change that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, I shit, man. Know. Reality of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, Bit of an know, obscure I, I, sort of conversation, but. But, you know, if you. Some nuggets in there. If you, if you made it to the end of the episode, here, I've got one last golden piece of information for you, which is getting from the start to the finish of this episode, significantly more difficult than getting a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you made it to the end of the episode, you've got it in you yep. to get your yep. jiu-jitsu black belt. Yeah. <laughs> you have the motivation to get it. <laughs> Fuck, man, the drop-off rate would be 99%. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, guys, so yeah, I just, you know, that was just a kind of a thought that was quite fresh on my mind, mm-hmm. this sort of topic. Uh, next week we'll be back to the positional series. Mm-hmm. We had – a question from uh, a listener who had asked about neon belly was not, the next positional series episode would just be guard as a whole. We'll talk about, about it more next week, but uh, we're doing guard just so we've kind of done an overarching mm. back mount side control guard. Cause the question the person asked was about neon belly. There's so many positions in jujitsu, particularly guard, you know, we will at a later date do more specific Mm. Uh, position neon belly like, breakdown yeah and, neon yeah. belly spider guard yeah. half guard deep half guard reverse delaheva delaheva octopus know, guard octopus guard <laughs> you know 
The passing, overrun, like yeah. fuck, so much. So uh, we're just going to do a bit of an overarching guard. We've kind of mm-hmm. then done the core positions, but I'll also answer that question um, about Neon Belly in the in the later episode. Awesome. Uh, and if you have a question that yes. you want us to answer, you can do so by following the link in the description of this episode and submit a question for the Q and A. We do it every ten episodes. It's coming up quick. Episode yeah. one thirty is the next Q and A. Get them in. Yep. Send in the questions. Get audio questions, it. links in the description. And, uh, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Catch ya.